If I have had great fun learning my craft and seeing the world, I envy the fact that your generation will get to reinvent journalism in even more meaningful ways, so long as you go into it with joy and a sense of purpose. Just think of it for a second. Cultural criticism, for instance, will change radically. It used to be the critic's craft revolved around describing ballets and concerts that you would never actually hear or see. Someone in this room, perhaps, will pioneer a new way of writing in a medium where in the third paragraph online you can listen to the music and see the performance. The best of all of our crafts are blending together right now. Great writers producing video, great photographers being able to show all their work online fast, great thinkers sitting in far corners of the world will get to comment for a wider audience. Some advice. Don't be careerist. Don't bemoan the fact that you will have to start in a small newspaper or television station. To be frank, I've grown weary of the young TV interns and newspaper interns I meet who say, I have to start at the New York Times or CBS or the Los Angeles Times or the Washington Post. Nonsense. Start someplace small and honorable, especially if that's what's available to you. Cover a trial in Savannah or Birmingham. Go someplace where covering poverty every day puts faces in anguish to the sometime bloodless debates you'll cover 10 years from now in Washington. The Times-Picayune in New Orleans may have pulled off the most honorable, honorable feat of any American newspaper this decade. It was almost destroyed during Katrina. Its building flooded, its presses underwater, its reporters fled on a delivery truck. Many of its staffers lost their homes. But instead of going out of business, the paper has been renewed. Wading through the waters, sleeping five to a dorm room outside the city, and sneaking past police to see the ravages of the storm, its reporters got the chance to do work unlike anything we've seen in America in a generation. The paper led the way in examining the government's failures. It immediately began using its website to help evacuees find missing loved ones as millions of Americans glued themselves to their computer screens. It continued to publish in the harrowing months after the storm, and it has been dearly rewarded for its public service. At one point, one of its editors brought copies of the paper to the Superdome in the days after Katrina, that awful period when we all watched in horror on television. When the editors showed up, people crowded around them, yanking the papers from their hands. They had no electricity, no internet, no television, and these people from the Picayune were suddenly bringing them what they needed the most, news. You get the sense now that people love their paper in New Orleans as they have never have before. The Picayune is back now, its circulation starting to come back, and it's making money. And here's that secret again, the thing no one wants to say. In the middle of it all, with the adrenaline flowing, with the biggest story of a lifetime in front of them, the reporters and editors there felt exhilaration. And if you can have some sort of joy in the middle of a catastrophe, if you can call it fun, that's what they had. And for those of you who end up as editors, I have news for you. Even editors can have fun, though not as often. <clears throat> and sometimes the most fun, the most joy, comes from tweaking the powerful. When I was managing editor of the Los Angeles Times, my phone rang early one morning as I had coffee in my house in Santa Monica. On the line, to my surprise, was George Tenet, then the director of the CIA. Tenet is a gruff but charming guy. We made small talk. I told him I was planning on taking my son to a movie that afternoon, and I couldn't make up my mind between a family movie and a violent movie. He recommended the violent war movie. <laughs> Boys like that kind of stuff, he said, summoning, I suppose, years of intelligence experience. <laughs> <clears throat> then he got to the point. The LA Times was about to publish a fairly explosive story about how the CIA was spying on the Iranian community in Los Angeles as a way to learn more about Iran, where it had precious few spies. This story, Tenet told me, would endanger lives. It would hurt an ongoing intelligence operation. Then he added, darkly, it would hurt the war on terrorism. 
I told him you'd have to be more specific, <laughs> that our job is to publish stories, not to kill them. He told me he couldn't tell me more, just that it would hurt the war on terrorism. I agreed to hold the story for one day so I could at least have another look at it and talk to the writer. Then I took my son to see the family movie. The next day, I called Tenet at his home and told him I'd heard, I had not heard enough of a reason to hold the story. We were publishing it on the next day on the front page, which we did. The day of publication, I waited for the world to cave in, for the government to denounce us, at least for Bill O'Reilly to call us unpatriotic. <laughs> Nothing happened, not a thing. To put it mildly, the head of the CIA had exaggerated. Here is how editors have fun. Take this down. <laughs> I walked into the newsroom the day of publication and watched as every other newspaper in America picked up our story, giving us credit. Actually, I strutted through the newsroom that day, <laughs> taking calls here and there from editors at competing newspapers, because editors have fun vicariously. So I've let you in on a secret. You are going to have a blast. You're going to have a shot at changing the world in small ways, Get your head out of the constant stories that sound the death knell of the profession. Read Romanesco with one eye cocked. We've been here before. We've gone from being sensationalist to straight. Radio has remade itself in response to television. Television has remade itself too many times to count. And newspapers have remade themselves in response to both. Don't get so caught up in your climb to success and in your desire to cover the powerful, that you miss the great adventure you're on, that you fail to learn from the lessons you pick up along the way. If you take your mind off your career and in just enjoy the work and the craft, I can promise you, I can absolutely commit to you, you will have a great time. I'd like to thank the college for inviting me here. You did something for me today. You honored me and I'm grateful for that. You probably don't know how grateful, given that I actually never graduated from college. <clears throat> but you also gave me the chance to honor a profession that has taken me places I would never have gone, and to remind myself just how much fun I've had along the way. Thank you, sincerely.